Hello, <laughs> coppers. Welcome back to the bush. Actually, my backyard again today. Now, in this video, we're going to change out the pan hard rod bush without using a hydraulic press, using basic tools that anyone can do in their backyard or even on the side of the track. So, let's get into it. So, as you can see, it's not in great condition here, so it was causing a bit of a wobble in the front end of the 80, so we're going to replace it. Now stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you how to replace a pan hard rod in the front of an 80 series without having to resort to ratchet straps or anything drastic like that. Bit of a tip I learnt and will save you time, your sanity and probably your marriage. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with it. So I've picked up a replacement bush. Now when you are picking up replacement bushes, make sure you go with a rubber bush as opposed to a, a urethane bush or might be called nolothane or as I like to call them, squeakothane because they do squeak after a while. The reason being for a four-wheel drive, you're going to see corrugations, vibration and stuff like that. Rubber's just better for those applications. Urethane, though it is getting better, seems to still get destroyed in short order if you're doing lots of outback work and going down the Amberdell or the Unidata even, and uh, you're seeing lots of corrugations. It just, the suspension chews up and spits them out. Now, when you are replacing these things, you have to understand that these are what's called an interference fit. And what that means is the diameter of here is slightly bigger than the inside diameter here. So there is an interference. This might be 41.2, for instance, and this will be 41.1. So you'll have 0.1 of interference. So it's hard to push in and it's hard to get out. <laughs> and we'll get around how we're gonna do it. So let's have a look at the actual diameter. So if I get out the vernier calipers, and that's coming in at 40.15. So we need to push it in, but we can't push onto here so what we'll need is something smaller and I've rifled through my sockets so these things seem to work all right and we'll have a look here remember 40.15 and this one's coming in 39.85 so it's slightly smaller but it's enough that if it does get a little bit stuck it's not going to be an interference fit it might need banging out afterwards if it gets a bit cockeyed but it's not going to be an interference fit it's not going to get stuck in there so we need to work out our way to push from this side against this side and drag the bush out. So let's show you how the setup works. So we've got a piece of high tensile all thread here. Now it's important to use high tensile and I'll show you why in a minute. This is the part I tried initially with and as you can see uh, it just couldn't <laughs> handle it under load, under tension there and I've just ripped it into two. So make sure it's uh, either a high tensile bolt or high tensile all thread as I'm using. And we get a high tensile thread and we get a little piece of Metal, I'm using a piece of six mil there. And then our socket. Now we already worked out that our socket was a smaller diameter than our bush. That one just feeds over into there. Now coming out the other side, we need something that the bush can go into. I've got a piece of tube, a bit of scrap tube I laying around. Now it needs to be a larger diameter than the bush is. So the bush can slip into there. So when it pops out the other side, the bush can slip into there, which this one does. So that will work. And then we get a Another little bit of six mil there. And high tensile nut and washer. We screw it all together. Now this isn't your ideal circumstance, so you're gonna have to line stuff up and it's it's jerry-rigged a little bit. So we'll get it all lined up and then we'll start cranking it on and see what happens. So I've tried to line up the tube here so it's concentric with the bushing so it'll easily slip into the bushing and this side here so it pushes out that way and into the receiver here i've tried to line that up concentrically as well righty so let's get some spanners and see if it'll work okay so i've had to put a little bit lower in the vise so when the 18 mil comes down it gets jammed against the vise there so now all we should have to do is tighten this down now there's going to be a bit of tension on there so we'll start cranking away and see how we go. Might need to resort to the breaker bar. I'm not overly happy with that. I might readjust it. Starting to get a bit cooey on the other side. And primarily it seems to be the height in the vise, a little bit more leverage than I'd like. Getting nice and low in the vise. 
Okay, yeah, so we'll check all our alignment again and we'll start cranking him down again. There we go, I feel it starting to move now. So I'll keep cranking away. This would be better if it was on a bench. <sighs> I didn't say this was going to be easy. Okay, I think we've bottomed out here now, so we'll back it off and see where we're at. Okay, there's our receiver. Here's our removed bush. Now, let's get something onto that and beat it out. Now, once we've done that, I'll show you how to put the new bush in. Probably easy to wake this through this way. Voila! Now before you can reinstall the bush into the bore, you're going to have to check it for nicks, cut scratches, or maybe even a bit of rust. If there is, get onto a bit of sandpaper or whatever, but this one seems to be pretty good. Now we are going to cheat a little bit with this one. Now as you can see, we need to be pushing against this surface, and we need this surface in line with this surface to finish the install. But we can't push against this surface because it'll just push against the rubber. So what I've done is I've knocked up a bit of plate there. You don't need to do this. And I'm just going to assemble it like that. So I can keep pushing until it becomes flush and then I know the end of my bush is flush with the end of the bush receiver there. So let's put it together. Oh, looks like that one's not long enough. <laughs> no, no, it looks like if I just take out the socket I should be right. So anyway, on the installation. Well, again, we'll line it all up and then we'll start cranking on it. Okay, so I've lined it up as straight as I can. This part is concentric here. The taper on the bush has started into here, so I should be able to just crank it down now and uh, install the bushing. So I finally got it tight. It's bedded down on the end here, so we'll disassemble all of this and we'll check it out. As you can see, it's nice and flushy now, so we've installed it successfully with nothing more than basic hand tools and a bit of nails. This is a repair you could conduct in your backyard at home without a hydraulic press, or even if you had a couple of you know, brushless electric tools in the back of your vehicle you, and a bit of steel or a bit of scrap you could find on the side of the track somewhere, you could do an effective bush change on the middle of the track somewhere, middle of nowhere, halfway across the Simpson. G'day, Daz. <laughs> Friend of mine, he did a suspension bush in his Prado on the French line. Radio. Anyway, so this is a workable solution. So as I promised before, we're going to head out the front. We're going to pop it back into the front of my 80 series. And I'm going to show you how to install a pan hard rod without having to resort to ratchet straps. Let's get into that. So this is a right hand drive Australian car and I've bolted up the passenger side to the differential. As you can see, this bit here doesn't line up. Now, I used to mess around with ratchet straps and whatnot and pulled the axle against the body, but I found an easy way. Can you turn the steering wheel, please? And that's it. Simple as that. Now, guys, if you like this video, give it the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So this is the driver's side of the vehicle and this is an Australian car so it's a right hand drive and as you can see it's not lining up. We've put the other side in, this one's not lining up. So can you turn the steering wheel back again please? 
And if we stop there, turn the steering wheel a little bit, and just about drop in. Turn it back just to touch the other way. <laughs> you didn't put it in the same position. All right, turn it to the right. Well, back left. Well, half a bit to the right. A little bit more to the right. Well. Alright, can you remember where that position is, please? 